Honorable delegates of this conference, my name is Hong Yifu. I am a senior student at Xi'an University of Science and Technology, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about my submitted paper. The paper I'll be presenting is titled Permeability Prediction of Sandstorms Based on Mercury Intrusion Method. As you can see, my presentation is divided into three parts. First, let's focus on the background of this paper. Natural resources like oil and gas are becoming increasingly essential in our daily life with the development of science and technology. So scholars are more well-drilled in the research of reservoirs. And permeability and porosity are critical physical properties in evaluating the ability of resource storing. A mercury intrusion method is cheap and easy to manipulate. Thanks to these advantages, it has long been used in measuring the percentage of irreducible water in rock samples. It is based on the theory that mercury cannot enter the pores of the sample at normal atmosphere pressure, but it can get into the sample under external pressure. Purcell first conducted an experiment in which he combined the mercury intrusion method with permeability prediction and got an equation model. The model was followed by several revisions by other scholars. This is a brief introduction about pore distribution in sandstones. As you can see, there are four major types of pores, and their connectivity determines the permeability in a rock sample. Permeability of rock samples is not determined entirely by pore size. Pore connectivity is a more important factor. Fractures have good connectivity. It co-occurs with other types of pores and only makes up a small proportion of a rock, but it can really increase the rock's permeability. The ear permeability method is another effective method that is widely used by earlier scholars. In this method, the terminology ear refers to nitrogen. It may call into question that why the liquid like water is not included in the permeability measurement. It is because the physical and chemical reactions that are likely to happen during the experiment. As we can see, these two figures shown on the slides demonstrate the fluid of gas is more even than that of liquid when entering the rogue samples. As a result, the permeability measured using gas is bigger than using liquid. The movement shown in the figure is related to Klinkenberg slate theory. The air permeability method contains two branches. Sorry, the air permeability method contains two branches. There are steady state method and non steady state method. And the steady one requires a relatively long period of time and precise controlling of temperature, while the latter one contains the process of pressing the rock to change their original form. Both are drawbacks of this method, but the air permeability method is still worth examining, and the development is still emerging. This is the apparatus that is used by Purcell when he conducted the experiment. I made a few changes to demonstrate it more clearly. As you can see on the slides, the apparatus contains four main parts. A is a mercury displacement pump. B is the sample holder part. The sample is held in chamber E. There are two lucid windows at the top and at the bottom of the sample holder. During the experiment, we can read the data on the reference mark F through the windows. C is a manifold system. And equipment D helps to measure the volume of mercury. As you can see, the function of G is connecting different parts of the apparatus. There are many revisions on the apparatus and on the process of the experiment. The effectiveness of this method depends on the properties of the rogue samples. For example, it is concluded that the result is more valid in rogue containing large and medium pores. Now I'm going to show you four models I delineated in my paper. The first one is Purcell's model. Apart from the achievement that I mentioned earlier, his research fills the gap of the permeability measurement in small and irregular samples like drilling cuttings. And his experiment only took hours, which is fast given the earlier trails took days to finish. However, the limitation of this method is that it contains too many parameters as you can see on the right side of the slide, so it is always hard to get them all. And secondly, let's talk about Thomer's model and Thornton's model. I merged these two in one part because they are related. Thomer studied a log-log plot, 
and used hyperbola to show the relationship between the capillary pressure and mercury saturation. Based on this, Swenson concluded the equation that is related to the, rela the ratio on the slide and the permeability. And the ratio, you can see it on the right side of the slide. It contains two parameters, they are Sb and Pc, in which Sb is the mercury saturation and Pc is the threshold capillary pressure of the hyperbola. Then, this equation is revised by a Chinese scholar, Li Jianming. He removed the original ratio with a new ratio. As you can see, the difference is that the PC is changed into another parameter that is the square of PC. The new ratio is more sensitive to the changes in permeability. The next one is Pitman's model. He empirically carried out a series of equations to, to calculate the pore aperture rate corresponding to a range of mercury saturation and concluded that the correlation is the highest when the mercury saturation is 25%. The corresponding equation is shown in two forms on the slide. Razi correlated the mercury intrusion method with NMR data, also known as nuclear magnetic resonance data, and added a mathematical model between porosity and porthole radius in tight sandstone reservoirs. In his model, the best correlation is when the mercury saturation reaches 10%. However, this saturation can be different because the pore structure is complex in rock samples. So that explains the different best saturation between Pitman's model and Razi's model. Here comes comparison of the four models. As it discussed earlier in this presentation, the mercury intrusion method is used in a limited range of rocks, and most of them are conventional plastic rocks. But when it comes to tight rocks, the performance is not that good. This is the same in carbonate formation, as its pore structure is more complex. Nording used the carbonate samples and high pressure mercury intrusion to evaluate the performance of the models. The result is that Swanson's model behaved the best, and then followed by Thomas' model and then Pitman's model, and all the three models are accepted by Nording. But according to Tang Xiao, Swenter's model derives from a single pore radius, so his model is less compatible than Purcell's model and Thomas' model facing the carbonate samples with more complex texture and pore structure. A similar result is also concluded in Rash's model research, in which he compared 16 different models in total. And the result is that, and the result is that Pitman's model performed the best, while Swanton's model shows the least accuracy among the four models in limestone reservoir. So the conclusion of my paper is that by measuring the pore distribution and predicting the permeability, mercury intrusion method could be applied in reservoir evaluation and in reducible water determination. And although all of the four models related to it were calculated by painstaking research, it is Purcell's model that is applied the earliest and also is considered as a prototype in this study field. Swenson compensates for the method of Thomas, but his model may need further revisions to be more accurate. Moreover, it is Thomas' model and Pitman's models that are accepted by all the three scholars mentioned in my paper. By making this presentation, I want to express that Many researchers are well drilled into this field of study, so more precise models are still emerging and some former models may need to be revised for better accuracy. Although some of the models are claimed to perform badly by some scientists, the researchers took pains to conclude them, and these are irreplaceable and significant achievements that are largely based on by scholars today when concluding their results. So it is a must for us to show our respect to those former achievements, but dare to raise questions, revise, and innovate. And this is my presentation. It is my great honor to speak to you, and thanks again for listening.